there. So in this module, we're going to be taking a look at loanable funds market. So this is extra practice module 29. Um, and we'll take a look at market for loanable funds, do, 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 do. what shifts it around, how it's different and related to the other one. All right. Um, it says use the diagram of the loanable funds market to illustrate the effect of the following effects on the equilibrium interest rate and quantity of loanable funds. So in other words, use a quick little sketch and see what happens. So 1A, see here, says an economy is opened up to the international movements of capital and a capital inflow occurs. So for this one, right, we wanna start with QLF, IR, demand and supply. And it says an inflow occurs and you have to know what that is. So an inflow is money flowing in, that's why it's called an inflow. And so there's an increase in the supply of loanable funds and so we'd say the quantity goes up and the real interest rate goes down, right? Part B says retired people generally save less than working people at any interest rate. Okay. QLF, so we're gonna do this again, demand and supply. And it says the proportion of retired people in the population goes up. So if they save less, then, then actually there's less savings, right? And we know that savings is what the supply comes from, right? That's savers, I, I poor handwriting here. So there's less supply, so a shift to the left, which means interest rates go up and the quantity goes down. Okay, question number two says, explain what's wrong with the following statement. Savings and investment spending may not be equal in the economy as a whole in equilibrium because when the interest rate rises, households want to save more money than businesses will want to invest. Um, that doesn't make any sense. It did it, it, because it, wrong because there's there's just a new equilibrium, right? There's just a new equilibrium. So, like this is actually to kind of describing what what this one um, or actually what this one is, right? Households want to save more than money than businesses want to invest. That's not really true. Um, because when that happens, right, the interest rate just goes down and the quantity demanded of, of money from the loanable funds market increases. So you just get a new quantity. Um, then, and so I don't understand why, why you even say such a silly thing. Don't do that. Don't say those silly things. Number three, suppose that expected inflation goes from three to six. How will the real interest rate be affected? If it's expected, if we think it's going to happen, then we're just going to build it in. So um, no change. B says, what will the nominally interest rate be affected? It should go up, right? Because it'll go up by 3%. Because if it's expected, then everybody just kind of builds it in and they go, okay, everybody just move your interest rates up by 3%. In that case, it goes from three to six. What will happen to the equilibrium quantity of loanable funds? Well, if there's no change in the real interest rate, then you know there's no change in quantity. Um, because again, this is the real interest rate, right? So if there's no change in the real interest rate, then they just stay where they are. The nominal interest rate can go up and down all day long. Um, it's the real interest rate that affects the quantity and the, the amount of loanable funds. Okay, let's take a look at these multiple choice questions. MC number one says a business will decide whether or not to borrow money to finance a project based on a comparison of the interest rate with the rate of return generated from the project. So this is a phrase that you might not be familiar with, but it's the idea that, that like if you're a business, you would wanna compare what's the cost of borrowing to what I expect to earn, and we call that the rate of return, so C. Um, and we wouldn't say profit, we wouldn't say expected revenue because that's like a total amount. What we're trying to do here is like compare the percentage, right? The flow of money out that we have to pay for borrowing versus the percentage of money flowing in that we're going to be generating. So that's really why we use that rate of return to compare to an interest rate. Number two, the real interest rate equals the nominal minus the inflation. Uh, where is that? B. Okay. Number three. Which of the following will increase the demand for loanable funds? So the federal government budget surplus, no, that decreases, right? Because we said earlier, government borrowing can boost the demand for loanable funds because they're literally borrowing more. So that's not um, an increase in perceived business opportunities. That would increase the demand for borrowing because if businesses are looking around going, woo, the economy's on fire, I want to get bigger, then they're going to want to borrow more money. So we know the answer is B. Let's take a look at the others um, just to see why they're not the right answer. A decrease in the interest rate would, would just move you along the curve. So, so that's price doesn't shift the curve. Positive capital inflows, that's a supply shifter. That's more money flowing in. And so we wouldn't say that that affects the demand. 
decreased private savings rates. Again, savings, right? We just wrote this up here. Savings is the supply. So if there's a change in the savings rates, it's not going to affect the demand for money. So that's why those are not correct. Number four, what will increase the supply of loanable funds? So this is basically the same question, but now it's saying increasing the supply. Um, increase in perceived business opportunities, no, because that's that's the borrowing. Decrease government borrowing. Um, ooh, see now, I, I would argue that B is correct because as I taught you in the lesson, if there's borrowing, can government borrowing, some, some economists model it as a change in supply because I told you in the video, they vacuum up the supply before it gets to everybody else. So actually, B could be correct um, because it's increasing the supply available for everybody else. C is, is what they're probably wanting you to say, an increased private saving rate, because that actually increases the supply of vulnerable funds. So I'm going to say C with a little asterisk and say that B is also correct and on um, fixed on the quiz, right? So just kind of know that like, I'm not going to have that answer on the quiz. I'm just going to have the answer C. An increase in the expected inflation rate that would affect money demand, or sorry, loanable funds demand because people would borrow more and that kind of thing. Um, de decreasing capital inflows also affects money supply. So, um, but it's it's decreasing the money supply. Number five, uh, both lenders and borrowers base their decisions on a real interest rate, um, and so so that's that's kind of what we can say here. You know what? This expected real interest rate that's probably what they want you to say. Um, for this problem, just because you don't know what your actual interest rate, your real interest rate is going to be until afterwards. Right? So, so technically, I bet they, they want you to say A here, um, but I'm, I'm going to tweak that and, and just change it that because C is such a essentially a similar concept. I'm going to say fixed on the quiz um, so that you won't see two of them saying real interest rate because it's, it's really that's a problem there. All right, let's take a look at number two. Free response number two says, do each of the following affect supply or demand? Does it increase, decrease, um, increase in capital inflows? So if there's an increase in, in money flowing in, that's an increase in the supply of vulnerable funds. This is really good practice. It's just, what is the shifter? Businesses are pessimistic about future business conditions. So they're not, they don't think the, the future is gonna be very good. So they're not gonna borrow today. So that's gonna decrease the demand for vulnerable funds. C, Government increases borrowing. So this one, you know, the, the traditional is to say increase of demand. Um, for that, you, you could also say decrease in supply of vulnerable funds. Either one's fine. Uh, private saving rate decreases. That one's pretty clearly the supply decreasing for vulnerable funds. All right. Hopefully this helped you.